Hi folks, this is Ken Behrens, and today I'll take you on a virtual tour of northern Tanzania. This is one of my absolute favorite tours. I've often thought if I was stuck in a sort of Groundhog Day scenario, or I had to guide the same tour for the rest of my life over and over again, this is the one I would pick. And this is also the tour if someone who never traveled before, was never going to travel again, wanted to go one place in the world, this is the trip I would recommend. Just about anybody is going to love this trip, whether you're a, a hardcore birder or whether you just like general travel or mammals or whatever, this tour has it all. Uh, there's so much to show you that I've really struggled to uh, select which photos and videos to show. So I hope this isn't too long, but it's a place that I really, really love. So here's the geographical context of Tanzania. Uh, it's this big country in East Africa, south of Kenya. Here's Lake Victoria, and here's the Indian Ocean. Biogeographically, there's just a lot of species in East Africa in general. You have montane forest, you have lowland forest, you have lots of savanna environments and grassland environments, just a very complicated and diverse mix of habitats. There's a small set of endemics to northern Tanzania uh, that we go after, and then you see this area west of Arusha is the main tour. And this area to the east, we visit on the extension, which is more aimed at endemic birds because these eastern arc mountains that run through the center of Tanzania have quite a few endemic birds, and the island of Pemba here has a couple of endemic birds. So, again, here's the tour route. This is the main tour to the west of Arusha and the extension to the east of Arusha. The timing of our set departure tour is crucial. We go in April. This is the beginning of a rainy season. The skies are full of big thunderheads. The landscapes are lush and green. Birds are breeding. And the great Serengeti wildebeest herd is calving. There's flowers everywhere. It's really a wonderful time to visit Tanzania. And it's also the low season for tourism. So we have a lot of these great places completely to ourselves. We call this tour Birding Among the Beasts, which is a great name. Now here's a common zebra with a red-billed oxpecker. We spend all but two days of this tour inside of protected areas where you can see big mammals anywhere, anytime. So most of the time you have to stay in a vehicle and there's a possibility of seeing a lion or a leopard just about any time. It's amazing. It's the only tour that we do that's anything like that. Here's just a little taste. There's giraffes, gray crowned crane, elephants, an auger buzzard being mobbed by a fork-tailed drongo. Lions. And I will warn you that I show a couple grizzly pictures and movies in here because that's part of uh, birding among the beasts. Sometimes you'll find recent lion kills or vultures and that sort of thing digging into a carcass. So if you're squeamish, you might want to look away for a couple of these things. I'll give you a little warning when something like that is coming up. And we don't ignore other wildlife either. Uh, this is a Mwanza flat-headed agama. So it's a little bit hard to describe what's so special about this tour. In some ways, it's like you're getting on a boat. You're in a big Land Rover for the whole tour, and you're going out into all these habitats. You're going through the seas of grass and through the savanna. So it's almost like you're being on a boat. And at the same time, it's almost like you're going into a time machine back into this ancient world that hasn't been destroyed by people. So it's really hard to express with a bunch of pictures of wildlife and landscapes. So I put together this little video, which hopefully will give you a little bit of a feel for the sort of visceral feeling of traveling through Tanzania. Of course, along the way, you're seeing tons of wildlife, tons of birds, but this video maybe communicates a bit more of the feeling.
So the tour starts in Arusha. Uh, everyone flies into Kilimanjaro International Airport. And if you're lucky on the way in, you might have great views of Mount Kilimanjaro. And the, actually the area around the airport is one of the best ones for getting a good view of Africa's tallest mountain. It's around 20,000 feet tall. So here's Kilimanjaro Airport. And from Kilimanjaro Airport, beneath the slopes of a namesake mountain, we make our way over to Arusha National Park. Our lodge is just outside of Arusha National Park. And of course we start birding right away. In the garden you can get the very localized Tiveta golden weaver and it's also a good spot for the brown breasted barbet. The next morning we go into Arusha National Park which is this wonderful area between the Ngorondutu crater and uh, this big mountain here, which looms over Arusha, is Mount Meru. It has everything from forest, savanna lower down, up to Afro-Alpine habitats on the top. Incredibly diverse park. This is what Mount Meru looks like, and this is the savanna landscapes down below. We start seeing big mammals right away. These are African buffalo, of course with a red-billed oxpecker here. There's some localized birds that we don't see widely on the tour, where this is our only chance. Uh, one of those is the mustached grass warbler, member of an endemic African bird family. Another target bird is the Pangani longclaw. It's easy to see why it's called a longclaw in this photo. So after some birding down in the savanna, we make our way up to the Ngorondutu crater rim. And this crater is covered in montane forest. That's a view down into the crater. It's sometimes called the mini Ngorongoro crater. And in this montane forest, we can find some great birds like bar-tailed trogon. And it's also really good for primates. This is the white-throated or Sykes's form of blue monkey. And we always see Guareza colobus as well. Spectacular big monkey. So the next day, we make our way over to the other side of Mount Meru. It's much, much drier over there. And we visit this place that birders have named the Lark Plain. You'll see why. This is how the Lark Plain looks in the dry season. Remarkably barren. There's barely any grass left at all. And here it is in the wet season, a little bit greener, still pretty barren. But this small plain has a bird that is endemic to it called the Beasley's Lark. Really cool little lark. Not a colorful bird, but it has lots of character and it's pretty special to see something that is just so globally rare. The plane is also good for the short-tailed lark and some sand grouse, like chestnut-bellied sand grouse. After we finish up birding on the plane, we head into some adjacent dry Somali Maasai woodland. If you've watched my Ethiopia virtual tour, you know that this is maybe my favorite habitat in the world, the bird. It looks quite barren, but it's just loaded with cool birds. Things like buff-crested bustard, eastern violet-backed sunbird, red-throated tit, that's a localized East African bird, pygmy batis, rosy-patched bushrike. You often get several of these birds mixed with other things in one single mixed flock. And this is one of my favorite birds of this area. It's the red-fronted warbler. Great bird. So after a full day of birding in and around the Lark Plain, we make our way back to Arusha, where we spend the night, again with Mount Meru looming overhead. And the next morning, on our way out of Arusha, we stop at a coffee estate that has some of my favorite coffee in the world. It's absolutely fantastic coffee. So I usually recommend if people want to buy coffee, you get a few bags here. It makes a great gift. 
And as we're all hopped up on caffeine, we go for a bit of birding as well. Uh, this is the best place on the tour to see the white helmet shrike. Great bird. Leaving Arusha, we drive for a couple hours down into the Great Rift Valley to Tarangire National Park. This place has a mix of savanna and grassland. It's just incredibly birdy. So right at the gate of Tarangire, I normally stop and have a picnic lunch, and this is a good place to catch up with some of the common northern Tanzanian endemic birds, like ashy starling and yellow-colored lovebird. They're both common around the gate. It's actually hard to eat lunch because we're so distracted by so many birds. Heading into the park, this is what it looks like. It's this lush, moist mix savanna. Lots of baobab trees. Here's a herd of impala below a relatively young baobab. Some common zebra with a baobab. And we stay at one of my favorite lodges. These wonderful panoramic views from the dining room. And these are the rooms. They're actually tented, although very, very comfortable. But the great thing about a tented lodge is that at night you can hear the wildlife. So we hear lions almost every night, we hear hyenas. It's just a very wild place. We tend to have these vivid dreams about these animals. This is a view from my room, and those are some elephants down below. So we start exploring Tarangire. Lots and lots of big mammals. Not quite as many as the Serengeti, but there's still many big mammals, like waterbuck. There's some cool smaller mammals as well, like dwarf mongoose. Get them in big herds. Oh. And this is bended mongoose, a uh, bigger mongoose. Olive baboon. So birders come for the endemics and just for the great variety of birds overall. But most folks visit Tarangire for African elephants. They're wonderfully abundant in Tarangire. That's a classic scene with the big baobab. Here's a close encounter with a whole herd of elephants. Of course, this is birding among the beasts, and there's lots of great birds. Uh, this is double-banded sand grouse and double-banded courser. This is a rare and mainly nocturnal bronze-winged courser, which we occasionally get lucky with. Here's northern white-bellied bustard in action. Tarangiri has a remarkable diversity of Franklins. Uh, it's one of the few places in the world where you have this red-necked Franklin alongside yellow-necked Franklin. There's lots of great smaller birds too, like little bee-eater, red and yellow barbet. Here's a white-browed kukul singing. To give you some small idea just how diverse Tarangiri is, I can hear four other bird species in the background of this 10 second clip. There's Cape Turtle Dove, White Browed Scrub Robin, Grayback Cameroptera, and Rattling Cysticola. That's typical of Tanzania. I really love this little old world flycatcher called Silverbird. Silver Silver so we spend three nights in Tarangire and I normally spend one full day visiting the Silale Swamp. Here's the swamp. 
a great place for some water birds like uh, saddle-billed stork. Often lots of migrating Eurasian birds like blue-cheeked bee-eater. And sometimes there's thousands of European rollers moving through. The edges of the swamp are a really good place to see southern ground hornbill. This is what they sound like. <laughs> These guys make up their own bird family with only two members, the ground hornbills. Have lunch at this wonderful picnic spot just loaded with birds, and usually we're the only people there, especially during the low season. Watch the sunset behind a baobab. So leaving Tarangire, we spend most of the next day in Lake Manyara National Park. This is an even more diverse park than Tarangire. This here is the edge of the Rift Valley Escarpment. You have lush forest here, you have wetlands, you have a, a big saline lake, you have savanna, you have grassland. Here's the view of Lake Manyara from the side of the Rift Valley. Unbelievably diverse. Uh, once on this day of the tour, I saw almost 300 species of birds. So Lake Manyara has wetlands, which are good for things like yellow-billed storks. There's a whole huge nesting colony of yellow-billed storks. You get lots of migratory shorebirds like Ruff. There's grassy short plains where you get giraffes and other big mammals. Also good for colored Pratt and Cole. You have this lush woodland along the sides of the Rift Valley, which is good for birds like Black Bishop and Purple Crested Taraco. And then you actually have this groundwater monsoon forest which is the habitat for this huge monkey and antelope eating crowned eagle. And it's also the place where you see silvery cheeked hornbill. So this place is just like avian overload. It's just too many birds for most people to keep track of. You're just seeing cool birds constantly through the day. So leaving Lake Manyara, we head up the side of the Great Rift Valley, and then we climb up the Ngorongoro Crater Rim. It's one of the most epic places on earth. This is the view that greets you when you come to the crater rim. It's absolutely spectacular. Uh, people often tear up when they see this view. It's just so moving. You have this feeling that if everything else in the world gets destroyed, somehow this place will still be here. On the way to our lodge up on the crater rim, we usually see Hildebrandt's Franklin. And this is our lodge. Awesome sweeping views down into the crater. Every single room has a view like this. So we have a full day to explore the Ngorongoro crater. We spend two nights up here on the rim. We start birding up in this montane forest and then we descend into the crater for most of the day. So up in the montane forest there's a bunch of great birds like Takazi sunbird. And this is probably my favorite African sunbird, the golden winged sunbird. The spectacular bird. Good for great capped warbler. And one major target bird is Shallows Turaco. There are blue monkeys, but they look very different than the ones we saw in Arusha National Park. For comparison, the ones in Arusha have this big white ruff, and these ones are very blue. As you start to descend into the crater, there's this beautiful acacia woodland, which is the habitat of brown parasoma. What a bird. This is the way down into the crater. And this is how it looks when you get to the bottom. Just a gorgeous place. And of course, there's big mammals everywhere. Here's some African buffalo. Grant's gazelle, Thompson's gazelle, 
One of the less common antelope is eland. There's an oxpecker there as well, yellow-billed oxpecker. One of the common predators is a golden jackal, which is actually a wolf. Taxonomically, it's a wolf. Okay. It's a Just munching down a rodent. One of the mammalian targets is black rhino. It's by far the best place on the trip to see black rhino. Some of the big mammals are awe-inspiring and majestic, and some of them are more comic, like the warthog. People usually get a kick out of watching warthogs mess around. We just don't think of warthogs as doing each other. <laughs> Some good mud. Of course, this is birding among the beasts, so we're looking for things like uh, black-bellied bustards in this sea of grass and flowers. The male black-bellied bustard has this wonderful call. Crowned cranes are common, and we sometimes see them doing courtship dancing. Very common bird down there is Rufus Naped Lark. One of our targets is Rosy Throated Longclaw. Wonderful bird. Lots of raptors throughout this tour. This is a black-chested snake eagle. There are lots of yellow-billed kites, especially around the picnic areas. And these guys are expert at grabbing the sandwiches right out of people's hands as they're about to eat them. I always warn people about this, and we still always lose a couple of sandwiches. This is another common picnic site scavenger, the rufous-tailed weaver, near endemic, just gets into Kenya. So leaving the Ngorongoro crater, we head into the real Serengeti ecosystem to an area called Ndutu. It's just outside of the Serengeti National Park. It's in the Ngorongoro conservation area. And what this means is that we can drive off-road, which is a really good way to look for birds and mammals in this habitat. Along the way, we can have some adventurous river crossings during the rainy season. This is what it looks like at Ndutu. You have a nice mix of grassland and woodland. This is the lodge where we stay. And our biggest target at Ndutu is always cheetah. This is probably the best place in the world to see cheetah. Fantastic cats that are quickly declining across Africa. Here's a couple young males. <laughs> if we're really lucky, we might get to see a mother with cubs. Here's a couple half-grown cheetahs messing around. Just so agile. So, so about how old do we think the, the two young ones are? And Dutu is also good for the king of the beasts. This was a great sighting we had of two mothers and a whole bunch of cubs. Oh, 
That's why they keep moving all the time to, try to avoid the <coughs> You can hear the cubs whining. We'll also see the lion's big rival, the spotted hyena. And there's also some far less imposing predators like the bat-eared fox. Looks a bit like Master Yoda. And of course, there's birding too. Here's a Koki Franklin. Tiny little raptor, pygmy falcon, is pretty common. This is quite a scarce nocturnal courser, the three-banded courser, which we often get. Big spectacular bird, the Cory Bustard. Here's one displaying. They do this foam bath display. Another big spectacular bird is the secretary bird. Here you can see one striding across the plains. They have these incredibly long legs that they use to stump anything they come across, whether that's a snake or a mongoose or a big lizard. Awesome birds. Very sort of primitive raptors. They're in their own family. So we don't neglect the smaller wildlife either. Here's a dung beetle in action. They collect this big ball of dung and then they roll it sometimes for a pretty long distance to get it to where they have a hole dug. Put it in the hole and then they lay eggs on that big ball of dung. It's just amazing how they can move that weight at their tiny size. Watch the sun set over the savannah. We settle into the dining room of our lodge and do the checklist, maybe have a beer, and then we wait for some genets to appear. There's a family of genets that lives in the roof of the lodge. <laughs> so this is our best chance to see the small spotted genet. They look like cats, but they're actually in the mongoose family. And Dutu has some good woodland habitat as well, which has uh, lots of great wildlife, like Kirk's Dick Dick. The juvenile Kirk's Dick Dicks have this hilarious kind of red hairdo. Sometimes we get lucky and find a day roosting Burroughs Eagle Owl. There's actually one more endemic bird to find here, which is the Great Breasted Franklin. Near endemic Fisher's Lovebird. Sometimes you get them in big flocks. Common bird, blue naped mouse bird. That's an endemic African family, the mouse birds. Lots of great little wax bills like uh, purple grenadier. Lake Ndutu itself is good for a few species of birds. Uh, this is a habitat of chestnut banded plover. And it's also good for flamingos. This is greater flamingo. So leaving Ndutu, we go into the heart of the Southern Serengeti Plains. This is the place where the great Serengeti wildebeest herd calves, normally in April. It takes a bit of luck to see them, but if we're lucky, we won't just see a few or hundreds or thousands or even tens of thousands, but we'll actually see millions of wildebeest. We'll see the entire landscape covered in wildebeest for hundreds of square kilometers. This really is one of the world's most incredible natural spectacles. It takes a little bit of luck to see, but uh, April's a really good time for it, and it's unforgettable. It's like something from another age. 
The plane is also good for yellow-throated sand grouse. So making our way into the Serengeti, we end up in the uh, central Serengeti. This is an incredibly rich place for big mammals. Giraffes are all over the place. Here are some giraffes crossing a swollen river. It was quite an amazing thing to see. Here's some vervet monkeys. They're always fun creatures to watch. One of the big reasons to visit the Central Serengeti is that it's one of the best places in the world for leopard. Coming up next is a short movie, about 30 seconds, of a leopard chewing on a uh, recently killed chunk of antelope. It's a little bit grisly, so if you're squeamish, you might want to look away for 30 seconds. Central Serengeti is just loaded with hippos. This one has a Eurasian moorhen on its back. Occasionally they'll leave the water during the day, and baby hippos are pretty cute. This short movie shows exactly the same hippo pool in the wet season and in the dry season. So during the wet season, it's nice and clean, there's lots of space, hippos are relaxed, no problems. Things get pretty crowded in the dry season as the uh, pool starts to evaporate. It's pretty stinky and dirty, there's not enough space, and these territorial squabbles break out. <laughs> Life gets pretty tough for the hippos. Somewhere in the Serengeti we usually see a recent kill with a bunch of vultures digging in. This is a lappet-faced vulture and a rupel's griffin. Um, next, I'll show a short movie of vultures eating. It's not exceptionally grisly, but it might be a little disturbing if you're uh, squeamish. But seeing this is an unforgettable thing, just the calls of the vultures and the way that they uh, fight with each other. And... See, they climb onto each other's backs and they batter each other and push each other out of the way. It's just ridiculous. That helps with digestion. Of course, birding among the beasts, there's plenty of great birds. This is actually one of the most common birds, the superb starling. A little less common, Hildebrandt starling. Similar, but different. One of my favorites, gray-headed silverbill. Silver During the rainy season, we usually get some breeding plumage widas, like this male eastern paradise wida. Crazy birds. Serengeti is really good for the scarce Hartlib's Bustard. This one is all inflated because it's displaying. Lots of Eurasian migrants come through, like this common rock thrush and this lesser gray shrike. 
So on one day, we usually visit the more western parts of Serengeti National Park. We have some special target birds, including the endemic Tanzanian red-billed hornbill. And we visit this very specific whistling thorn savanna to see an extremely localized bird called Karamoja apelis. It's specialized on this whistling thorn. And if we have time, we'll get into the range of gray crested helmet trick, another very localized East African bird. For comparison with the white helmet trike, which we saw earlier on the tour, you can see the white helmet trikes have these eye waddles, and a shorter crest, less black on the shoulder, compared with the gray crested helmet trike. Well, from the central Serengeti, we have a long day's drive back to Arusha to catch our flights out of Tanzania or to continue with the extension. Along the way, we stop at Gibbs Farm, which is on the slopes of the Ngorongoro Crater. Gibbs Farm has an absolutely spectacular lunch buffet. I look forward to this every tour. It's wonderful food. We also do a bit of birding at Gibbs Farm. There's a little colony of breeding grosbeak weavers. And this bird has maybe my favorite nest in the whole world of birds. It's just this incredibly tightly woven, soft looking football. It's a beautiful nest. So continuing the drive from Gibbs Farm, we make our way back to Arusha, to Kilimanjaro International Airport. Some folks will head home from here, but we do offer an extension that goes out to the Indian Ocean coast and has a whole bunch of other different birds. So I'll briefly take you through the extension, some of its highlights. So heading east from Arusha, our first stop is the town of Same which is next to Nkomazi National Park. Nkomazi has this dry Somali Maasai thorn scrub, similar to what we birded at the Lark Plains. It has some special birds like Hunter's Sunbird and Bear-Eyed Thrush. From Same, we continue east and we go up into the West Usambara Mountains. Totally different habitat up in the West Usambaras, lush montane forest. Lots of great birds. One of them is the localized common tailor bird. It's one of our big targets. We'll also be looking for the Angolan colobus. From the West Usambaras, we head into the East Usambaras. This is a lower lying mountain range, which has forest with pretty different character and a different set of birds. This is what it looks like in the East Usambaras, little patches of forest and lots of tea. This is one of the rare target birds, the long-billed tailor bird. Then after three nights in the East Usambaras, we head down to the big town of Tanga, where we catch a domestic flight out into the Indian Ocean to the beautiful island of Pemba. Pemba has some remnant monsoon forest and it has a couple of endemic birds like the Pemba white eye and the Pemba sunbird. It also has this awesome big bat called the Pemba flying fox. Well, from Pemba, we catch a domestic flight Back to Arusha, where we connect with our outbound international flights. That wraps up the tour, wraps up the extension. Just a little bit of information for anybody who's thinking about taking this tour. Um, it's a very physically easy tour. There's a little bit of walking on the extension, but there's virtually none on the main tour. Actually, the only physical difficulty is just that you're in the car a lot, and there is a lot of driving. But that's really the only way to see this wonderful environment. Um, the lodges are very, very comfortable, world-class lodges. The food is excellent, kind of Western fare. Some Tanzanian things mixed in, but nobody's going to struggle to find good things to eat. 
the main tour is about two weeks long and the extension is just over a week. So all in all, it makes for a three week trip or if you just do the main tour, only two weeks. Uh, well, a big thanks to all the folks who watched this virtual tour and the other virtual tours. Really appreciate your support and uh, thanks for watching.